Man of God, we honor you. We thank God for what he's doing in your life. In Cameroon and across the nations. Please help me honor him. Come on, celebrate the name of the Lord. You can do better, please. Hallelujah. Before we sit down, I want us to celebrate. A man I listened to him from the, for the very first time, and I told myself, I said, I must join this chariot. Yes. You see, I've been preaching for about 30 years. But what I heard from him in just a short discussion, he said to me, he said, Dr. Paul, do you know that church growth is not by prayers? I withdraw my steps. And he said, it is by traffic. I sat down and said, please, sir, lecture me, teach me. I didn't know what traffic was. Uh, you know, you're like thinking about traffic lights. Am I making sense? I told him, I said, you must come to Cameroon. You must bless our people. I love you, Pastor George. I honor the grace of God upon your life. And sincerely, I don't take it for granted. I take it as an honor and a great privilege to be the one to conclude in this impact. I want to really thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for the trust. We stay loyal and committed to this connection, sir. Thank you, it is a privilege. Come on, celebrate God. Of course, Mama, I listened to you. I was telling myself and already writing some notes as I need to copy this thing you said, especially about Joshua. Thank you so much. I've been watching you and following up also. Thank you so much. And my wife just fell in love with you. Thank you so much, Ma. Amen. And for all the impact pastors, I want to celebrate you. This is massive. This is massive. This is massive. Amen. To so my Cameroonian brothers, sisters who came, especially Pastor Debbie, the Lord bless you, man of God. I celebrate you. Amen. Came with some of my leaders. They are somewhere there. But I want to celebrate my wife. <laughs> Reverend Leslie Mbwagbo, please celebrate her for me. Amen. I don't want to so much eat your time this morning. I have too much to say. And... Uh, we will be able to deal with the time we have. I want to read one scripture, then I believe we'll be able to sit down. Acts of the Apostle chapter 10, verse 36. Acts of the Apostle chapter 10, verse 36. Are we there? Can I have it, please? The word which God sent... No, go to verse... 37, 13 rather, am I correct? It says, no, after David have served his generation, that should be 38, am I correct? Yes. No, 13. Yes, 13. Dead, no, 13, 36. Yes, sorry. He says, and for David, after he has served his own generation, say his own generation. Say he served his generation. And he says, by the will of God, fell asleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. Father, we thank you today. Grant expression with accuracy. Give us understanding with precision. Let's move from here to another dimension altogether. Thank you for everything you have done. Thank you for the depths, the things you have instructed us, Father. We say, Lord, let the river flow in Jesus' name. Amen. Please sit down. Thank you so much for this time. I really feel too honored. I was talking with uh, Pastor George when he told me. I said, please, sir, I don't just want to come and minister. Give me the privilege and the opportunity to come and fellowship with some brethren. And he granted. Thank you once more again, sir. Amen.
I want to celebrate all the pulpit guests and everyone that has gone ahead of me. Uh, I want to thank God for this great nation. A lot of people think I'm a Nigerian. Uh, <laughs> Pastor Yemi Davis was asking me yesterday, he said, so you relocated to Cameroon, right? With all your family, why did you do that? I said, I'm a Cameroonian. He said, it's not true. <laughs> Hallelujah. But my spiritual father is a Nigerian living in Cameroon. My foster father, the one that raised me, is a Nigerian. And in February last year and two days ago, the Lord gave me a commission for Nigeria. So I am a Nigerian. <laughs> Say better amen. amen. I came with three books, and I will urge you to get them. The Ultimate Kingdom, talking about understanding the kingdom and the dynamics of the kingdom. Clash of Kingdom, especially for those of us who are going to influence the different sectors and domains of influence. You need this book. And redefining, it says the mission redefined. A lot of concepts we teach in church, some of them are not really correct. I'll give you just one or two. Uh, the Bible says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Am I correct? But the church went and removed the word thief and replaced it with the word devil. Am I correct? The Bible never said the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus was talking with the teachers. He says that the discussion started in chapter 9. So he says, all those who came before me are thieves. So anyone who is teaching out of what scriptures recommend is a thief and will kill your life and will destroy your life. Am I making sense? And a couple of things I don't want to enter into that. But this morning, from the topic of the conference this year, which is what? Rise, emerge, advance, and take over. I want to settle more on the takeover. So tonight, uh, this morning, I want to talk on the takeover church. The takeover church. Number one, it's good to define concepts. It will help us to have guidelines as to what should be understood. One of the things we do is most of the times we hear things, but we don't have the epistemology or etymology of that word, talking about the or origin and the meaning it was ascribed to from the very onset. Is somebody following what I'm trying to say? So the word church, when it was first mentioned, in fact, Jesus mentioned the word church how many times? Two times. Two times. The word church, in the days of, and you know, you know when a, something is mentioned, right? He didn't say, I will build something and I will call it church. He said, I will build my church, which means churches were existing before the days of Jesus. <laughs> so the question we should ask is, what was it like? What was the church before now we are doing church? You see, if we are going to replicate as it were in the beginning, like when they asked Jesus the question, should we divorce? Why didn't Jesus say yes or no? He said to them, let's go back to the beginning. In the beginning, it was not so. So we must always go back to originality. What was it like? If not, we'll be doing something and call it church. Hmm. So, that word church, actually like it is, you know, translated, ecclesia. Which means they caught out once to build the city. But now when they give the translation, they cut it half. They said they caught out. The question is, caught out for what? <laughs> so, in the days of Jesus, or before the days of Jesus, only kings had churches. They had ecclesias. They had what is called cabinet or a senate, a body that the king had put together to be able to advise him on how to rule his nation. And when Jesus was speaking, he didn't speak like a prophet because prophets didn't have churches. He spoke as a king. So like David having his mighty men, right? That is a cabinet. 
Because in the days in the Christian empires, what they were doing is they will go into the army and pick, select people who have done things by strength and achieve certain results and bring them to become advisors to the king as far as his kingdom is concerned. In the days of the Roman Empire, they extended it not just to the military. The emperor went into the social arm, into the education, into the politics, went into different aspects of life and picked certain individuals by virtue of their results. Brought them and he, there were 120 in that council. When he sat with them, they were discussing the city, the life of the kingdom. The life of the nation. I'm taking you somewhere. So we must ask ourselves. So when Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. What was he talking about? What was he talking about? I will build my church and the gates of Hades. Gates of Hades in the days is not really like spiritual as we translate it literally today. Gates of Hades was like Boko Haram, was like the most ferocious, wicked army. He says, when this church comes, no institution, no government, no power will be able to withstand them. Oh, I thought I was talking to somebody. Are you getting what I'm saying? I build, I build my church. So in the mind of God, it's not just about having a gathering. So kepataya. So, when we finish healing the sick, when we finish casting out the devils, when we finish having deliverance, and we don't discuss the city, we have not had church. No, you're not getting what I'm saying. I, I, you're not, you're, are you following what I'm trying to say? There is a need to discuss the city because that is the essence of the church. That is the essence of the church. Number two, Jesus spoke more about the kingdom than he spoke about the church. We talk to them more about the church than discuss the kingdom. He says, I came, I was sent that I may preach the kingdom, not preach church. Because the church is in the kingdom. And when we don't get the big picture, we can be so busy in the church to the detriment of what the kingdom represents. Oleba Kapande. So, it will produce what? A lethargic church. A weak church. Because it doesn't know where it is coming from and what her assignment is in contemporary times. Very important. I don't do so much dwell on that. But you see, I had an encounter in 1999. I finished preaching. People were falling under the anointing and all of that. Then I was sat down. Please, sir. I had this emptiness on the inside. And I was asking the Lord, is this all to ministry? Lay hands, they fall. Blow anointing, they fall. Heal the sick. So as I sat there, the Lord picked a lady. He says, this lady, you prayed for her three, uh, five years ago. Did she fall under the anointing? I said, yes. The next question, did her life change? I said, no. He showed me another man. You prayed for this man three years ago. Did he fall under the anointing? I said, yes. Did his life change? That's why today, we find, you know, in the days when I grew up, when somebody fell under the power, they were there for hours, having an encounter with God. Today, it's almost a joke. We even get up laughing, laughing. And I ask myself, is this the Holy Spirit? Or it's entertainment in the church? And the Lord said to me, he said, son, everybody I sent on the earth, I gave them an assignment. I gave them a purpose. They came with a mission to fulfill. So the role of the church is to harvest them. And he gave apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors 
to do what? To build them for the work of the ministry, not for the work of the church. Which means, because at the end of the day, you are the light of the world. The church is the light to her community. Whatever we do here, when we finish, we will go back home. We will use the street light. You are not talking to me, somebody. We are subjected to their laws. What are we doing about that? I was telling my wife, I said, I have learned in one week what maybe I have not learned in 10 years. I mean, the wisdom we received here. From that day, I committed myself. Each time I finish praying for somebody, you shall be great. And the person gets back. The first thing I ask is, what is your passion? What are you feeling on the inside? What is God asking you to do? It's not because you find somebody finds himself in front of a crowd that is translated that he will be a preacher. You see, the problem with visions and interpretation is the one that is teaching. Is somebody following what I'm saying? So the church must grow. We must help people. Number one, after their salvation, Paul says they build virtue. After uh, 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 Peter, they build virtue. But after that, okay, knowledge, the knowledge of their purpose, their assignment. Why are they here? Let me say this quickly. God will not judge you for how long you lived on the earth. God will not even judge you for what? What you did for him. God will judge you for what he sent you to do. Which you did or did not do. Because carrying out things that we do. Does not replace an assignment. It simply means. Papa here can ask. Please. I need this carpet replaced. And he comes back two weeks after. Maybe say he traveled out of the country. On return, what happens? We have changed all the curtains. <laughs> did, we, did we walk? Yes. Did we do what he asked us to do? No. So the first thing he will look at is, what is this carpet still doing here? So there are many people who are busy but not on assignment. Oh, Kabale Basha Telemoratia. Listen to me. The fact that you are called to preach does not guarantee that you are actually doing the assignment prescribed for you. And the judgment will be based on that. Not what you did, but what you were assigned to do. We must help the people. Find their assignment. Find their purposes. It becomes a mandate. We must help everybody find out. Can I say something? After they are saved, what next? You have 1,000 people. Now they are saved. Now they are healed. Let me show you how the devil occupies us. Once they are safe, the next thing we promise them is marriage. If they are married, we now promise them children. When they have children, we promise them a better job. Or we promise them a job. If they have a job, we promise them what? Talk to me now, pastors. Promotion. If they are promoted, we now promise them what? You see, look at the journey. They are pursuing things. They are pursuing things. But he said, seek first. Seek first. Seek first. The kingdom and all these other things shall be added. If they are absent, it is synonymous that we are not seeking the kingdom. 
follow this so the church must grow so our commitment is more to things than the assignment so children are asking for things father bless me give me a land father give me a house give me uh, 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 whatsoever prosperity but this is this is what it says about prosperity you shall know you shall remember that I am the Lord your God that gives you the power to make wealth it does not stop there so that I may establish my covenant which I made with your fathers so God comes to a father of faith and gives him a vision it becomes a covenant between heaven and the earth then he goes to the people and gives them the resources for that assignment So, paying tight is not contributing to kingdom advancement. You didn't hear what I just said. Actually, when you want, because that's what belongs to God. It fuels the house. But for God's vision, and you must tell the difference between the house and God's vision. <laughs> tight brings food to the house. But the prosperity is for the covenant. I don't know if I made sense. So after this, what next? We have babies who all they do, they preoccupy us. Daddy, please for shoes. Daddy, please, can you pray so that something can change? It is true, it is wonderful. But listen to me, if you have a child in the house that keeps asking for things, he is 10 years old, 12 years old, 14 years old, 20 years old, keep asking. Then the, that child gets to 30. He's still asking. 40. He's at a point to get tired. You know what he said? He says, ask of me today. Why? He says, because thou art my son. Ask of me nations and I will give them to you for inheritance. Children ask for things. Sons ask for nations. No, I thought I, uh, somebody heard me. Children ask for things. But son, say, Father, give me Patakot or I die. Give me Nigeria or I die. Father. It is a calling beyond just what we want. But to an assignment bigger than us. When we keep feeding babies, breeding babies, they can be 1,000, but before God, they are not consequential. Because God cannot give the city to babies. Unto us a child is born, but unto us a son is given. And he is doing what? The government is upon his soldiers. God does not give the city to children. He does not give the nation to children. He does not give the nation to a baby church. The church must rise. Hallelujah. Listen to me. So we see this division. The Bible says Jesus is made to us what? The wisdom and the power of God. Say that with me. It didn't say he's made to us just. But this is the truth. The Jews seek for what? For a sign. They are seeking for miracles. The Greeks, the Gentiles, they are seeking for wisdom. The people out there want to know. That's why I think. You see, you see, you see, a pastor, Nigeria is very blessed because your economy, your, your nation is intertwined with religious beliefs. Yes. Because a governor is being installed, he will call for his pastor or his sultan. Am I correct? But in other nations, they are put apart. How do you influence such government? That's why most of the times what they, they call us in such meetings is for what? For opening prayers and closing prayers. You know why? What we have demonstrated to them so far is power. 
but not wisdom. They want to build their nation. They want to build their city. They want to build their economy, but we don't have answers. I was listening to Pastor George, he blessed me. The caliber of people that come to seek wisdom and strategy for governance. That's what we are talking about. There's a church about to be born. I tell you and I guarantee you, there's a church of Jesus Christ about to be born. That will take over all the systems and governing structures of our society. There's a church. And you must decide whether you will be part of it. You know, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 2, remember? It says, and they, there's what? There's a mountain in the house of the Lord. So the house of the Lord exists, but there is a mountain inside. There are those who will, be choose, who will choose to be part of the house. There are those who will choose to be part of the mountain. And it is that mountain that will be what? Elevated above all mountains. I push further. So the Bible says, are you ready for this? There's what I call the Elijah syndrome. Say with me the Elijah syndrome. Yes. Say it again for the second time. Yes. Elijah is very spiritual. In fact, what, he is one of the custodians of the dimensions we have seen in scripture. So when the Bible says the law and the prophets, who is representing the prophets? It's Elijah. He represents power. Why Moses represents what? Wisdom. Kobenia, Skadia. So the Bible says... Elijah had saw how corrupt the nation was. Challenges in the nation. But how will you bring this change? Elijah began praying. And prayers are very good, necessary to effect a change. But can I shock you? Prayers don't change a nation. declares the efficacious fervent prayer of the righteous makes tremendous power available but it does not use the power so when we pray we are disposing power on the earth but somebody must use that power to effectuate a change so Elijah prays fire comes down no dispute prays and heavens opened. In fact, Elijah was teleporting himself. He was the first person to experience teleportation. Every nation they went to, when they hear he's here, they come to look for him, he has disappeared. And the pastor, and Elijah the teach by appeared before Ahab. By teleportation. How would you break the protocol to come before the king? But he appeared. Look at that level of power. He gathered the nation. Go for a national revival. There was revival. Men gathered and began to worship God. Fire came. Prophets were killed. One woman did not attend that meeting. The woman was Jezebel. But listen to this. Jezebel was not just a woman, sir. She was an institution. Your prayers brought down fire, but it did not touch the institution. So the woman sat in her office, signed a decree. If Elijah is still in, the, in, in this country, by tomorrow, her, his head will be taken off. Elijah immediately took visa and left the nation. Why did you not bring fire against Jezebel? Because your fire cannot work against Jezebel. Your fire cannot bring down a government. It cannot. So what do we do? We try to replace the power to take over the place of wisdom. 
Arona Masia, Cabenda la Cusha Fita, Le Breneki Caparato Safia, Le Barata. God came. Elijah is confused. Elijah is confused. And Elijah says, Papa, I'm dead. I'm not better than my, my fathers. God says, Because you're repeating their same mistakes. He said, Sir, He said, I have 7,000 prophets. You and them can't change the nation. For me to change the nation, one, anoint Elijah, Elisha, in your state to continue in the prophetic to cover the nation, to make power available. Anoint Hazael, who was the king of Syria, to bring forth financial resources to sustain Israel. Number three, anoint Jehu. Hey. Anoint Jehu. You know why? Jehu may not know how to pray, but you are anointing and it's upon his head. Jehu may not know how to fast, but he is trained for leadership and capacity. So by the time Elisha is praying, Jehu should be bringing down the government. And the Bible says, Sir, and Jehu and, and Elijah went and anointed Elisha. You know what he said? I don't want to be part of government issues. I don't want to be part of what? government issues is that not what is happening in our days people who should anoint jehus are refraining from politics is it not hypocrisy that the church the word church means cabinet it's a political word yet they tell us a church is apolitical how can you say a cabinet should not discuss issues of the state And the Bible says, Elijah left. Elisha inherited the problems of his father. Second generation. Elijah also came, Elisha also came, was discussing things when the nation was going through crisis with the elders, having conferences, seminars that does not affect the nation. The king said, if by this same time, tomorrow, the head of Elisha stands on his head. Why are they pursuing your head? Because you are not addressing governmental issues. Number three, Elisha step aside. Anointed another prophet. We don't know his name. There's a third generation that God is raising. It was that third generation that went and called for Jehu. In a private room. It means when we will be doing discipleship for strategic takeover, it's not in the public meetings. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not in the open, it is private sessions with business takers, with entrepreneurs, with people in all domains. The Bible says after that, they put the oil on the head of Jehu. Jehu left from there from a captain. He went straight to the presidency. Who will vote for me? They said, I'm with you. Number two, push her down. Elect her out of office. We want to do what? Get people in office and lay hands on them and say, he's my son. Did you make him? That is why they are never they are never loyal to us. They are loyal to the system that fabricated them. They are loyal to the system. And you wonder, you say, please change this. He says, Pastor, my hands are tied. But if you were the one that had groomed him and anointed him, you will tell him, if you don't, I'll remove you from office. Why? 
you have the capacity to make and unmake. Listen to this. Jehu went to the presidency and brought out Jezebel. Who is the Jezebel we are trying to bring out? The institution we are trying to change. If prayers could change things, I guarantee you our nation Nigeria would have changed things. We are using good principles to apply in a wrong sector. That's what we were discussing, sir. If the church will say, let them take the nation for the next eight years, let us fabricate deliberately. You, 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 you see us. Why they are building this person for government? They are also commanding resources. You, 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 you. We give you the power to make wealth. Because without wealth, the political structures have no power. We want to take over the city. There's an approach to take over the city. If not, we will gather in thousands. We make noise. We are changing Nigeria. These are politicians sitting in their office. Wow, they have started again. What's the name of that new movement they give? Uh, what are they doing? Ah, wow, that's one. Send a small seed. Say, go and help them. They are not afraid of us. Why? We don't matter. Look at this. What's the power of government? Are you ready for this one? Jesus. Let's start by Jesus. No, let's go back to Moses. Moses ran away, though he had received a call. From who? Pharaoh. What was Pharaoh? Government. Are we together? Daniel, as powerful, who threw him into prison? Government. Who threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Fire people. Where? It was government. Who threw Jeremiah into prison? And all the prophets? In the days of John the Baptist? Who dealt with him? Though he was anointed, he didn't even finish his assignment. Government cut it short. Because the Bible says he was to come in the spirit and in the power. We didn't see any power demonstration of John the Baptist. Why? Government intercepted his assignment. Government. Can I go further? The disciples of Jesus, one after the other, except of John, though government threw him into boiling oil all of them died by government paul died by government jesus himself at the tender age pharaoh was looking for him god gave money to joseph and said please run with my son because that man has capacity to kill my son when government comes after you I am, sir, please. If it was not possible, what was God afraid of? Why run away with the son? It is because he has given power to government. Oh, yeah, Maradia. When they arrested Jesus, they said, We are killing you today. He says, I know because my father has given you the power. So the Bible says, fear the king and fear God. Fear who? And who? Don't fear only God. Though. You can end your ministry halfway when God has called you. Jesus died in the hands of government. Sit down, please. wait the Bible says and by a prophet 
God delivered Israel. Am I correct? And by a prophet, he also did what? Establish. You see, God said to Abraham, your children will be in a strange land for how many years? 400. How many years were they there? 430. So pastors, if you give a prophecy, it delays. Don't bother. Even God had that issue. I thought I, I, thought I just helped somebody. It was Pastor George that told us. He says, when you pray for a sick and it's not healed, don't bother yourself. You were just trying to help. Uh, impact a bit together. He says, you were trying to do what? You, it will not make him what? Seeker. God gave a word. And he delayed for 30 years. You know why? When the time came, God came. The question is, who will go for us? Who can I send? Look at the assignment. The assignment is to deliver the people. That is power. But also, it is what? Establish the people. The people have to be translated from a group of people to a nation. It will need you to have understanding in laws. In customary laws. God gave Moses how many laws? Ten. He developed 523 customary laws to govern their coexistence. <laughs> From 10 laws, somebody that has power in management, somebody that understands sanitation and health, don't defecate. When you finish, cover it. You know why he could not use? When God came down, Aaron was there. But God had to wait for Moses for 30 years. You know why? Aaron did not have the capacities. Aaron can use a rod and deliver the people. But Aaron doesn't have capacity to make them into a nation. Structures. Systems. I thought making sense. So God had to wait until he gets a man. Because the Bible says, and, Ab and Moses was schooled in all the wisdom of Egypt. He knows what it takes to run a nation. He does not only prophesy, but he can speak to the economists. He can speak to the political sector. He can talk about the laws made in the nation. If all you do, pray in tongues, feel good, ah, you heal a sick, you finish. Wonderful. There are dimensions God will never use you. <laughs> I thought that made sense. There are dimensions. You know what he said to them? Now I'm saying, the first time I sent you, did you lack anything? They said no. What did he say? Now as you go, take an extra pause. Someone say extra pause. Build your own economy as a minister. The first time you lack nothing. The word went with you. Now. Take an extra pause. Build your economy. Because there are days ministry will not give you. But the reserve you have built for yourself can sustain you and your family. Is that not what Pastor Yemi was telling us? Number two, he says, take an extra coat. You know, lepers were identified by their coats, prophets were identified by their coats, kings were identified by their coat. So he said, take another. Not the same, different. Why? You come today with a prophetic office. If they don't receive you, change to an educationist. You will take over your society. They don't receive you in that mantle. Change that mantle. Because there are people you will never reach with your prophetic titles. I was received by a president. I've seen many of them. But this one I, I will see, ma'am, was because I came as a financial consultant. And the president received me. When we finished, I called the second in command. Gave him straight word of knowledge. You've been poisoned three times. You have had accident two times. And I detailed his life. The man asked me, who informed you? I said, my government. He says, Cameroon. I said, no, I come from a higher government. 
I said, my brother, my senior brother is a king. And he has mandated me to represent him. He says, talk to me about him. I said, do you know a man called Jesus? He said, he said yes. The Jesus they talk about church. I said, they don't know him. I'm talking to you like one that knows him. He wants to help you. Are you ready? He says, yes. I said, kneel down. Open your eyes. He opened. I says, believe what you're saying because this is incantation. This is initiation. And I said to him, say, Jesus. He said, Jesus. Say, say I love you. He said, I love you. I said, say, I have seen your brother. And he informed me about you. No, so, you know, some of you think that it is that deliver me from my sins. The Bible says, if you acknowledge him as the son of God, and you believe in your heart, and you make that confession, the rest of the thing we add is not what makes them safe. And he finished. He says, so now I've become your brother. I said, we're of the same kingdom. Laid hands on him. And I told him, I said, you're this president, by then they were, they were vice president. I said, you're going to be the next president. And two years after, the man became the president. We are not talking feebles. There's a court we must take to break into certain ground. Oh, your man was Shafita. I want us to pray, but give me two minutes so that I engage us into prayers. Is that okay? Is that okay? Look at this. By a prophet. Ask yourself, what type of prophet? Are you an Aaron prophet or you are a Moses prophet? Aaron only stayed in the temple. Moses was both in the temple and outside. That's what the Bible says. We are what? Ministers after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek was both a king and a priest the oil on your head can speak to government one of the things we must do deliberately we must disciple people we must raise people in all facets deliberately to take over the nations look at this as i close Please listen, I'm a man under authority. I give you two points, then we pray. Is that okay? <laughs> Number one, please sit down, please sit down. The Bible says, the revival that is coming that will take over nations. It's not this revival we are enjoying. There's another revival. It is called the revival of Ezekiel. The water started from the temple. Somebody say temple. And in the temple started from the altar. Say altar. So the, the revival will start first changing the ministers. Then one cubit, 1,000 cubit, what happened? The knees. It engages prayers. Before you know, people are praying everywhere. They are praying. That means revival is coming. Then it went to the waste. Somebody say waste. Reproduction, right? Massive soul winning. Nigeria makes us afraid. How can they gather six million people in one place? Is that the nation? Massive soul winning. It moved from there to the chest. Someone said chest. Breast, resources. That's why there's no church on the earth that has money like Nigerian church. I'm telling you. When you travel, you hear testimonies of how the Nigerian church has prospered. You become envious. One man will say, you keep hearing the testimonies. Please, sir, uh, take eight plots of land. Please, sir. Am I talking to somebody? 20 million. The first day somebody called me and said, sir, I'm giving you one million dollars. I danced that day. I said, the blood, of, the blood has also arrived Cameroon. <laughs> Follow this. But the, the revival produced resources, right? Then the Bible says, and it went out of the temple to the city. 
What have we done? We have customized the revival within the temple. But the revival was not made for the temple. It started from the temple, but it is going out there to the city. And giant trees came out. Who are the trees? The righteous are like what? Trees planted by the rivers. Your giancy is not in the house of God. Your greatness is not in the house of God. It's out there. Light does not shine in light. Light shines in darkness. Part of the problem we have. So I call it the kingdom revival. Why? Kingdom revival goes beyond the church, as like I told you before, influencing what the city, the nation. Follow this. God said to Samuel, I know Saul is your son. You enthroned him. But now I have done what? Rejected him. That was on the second year of his mandate. Now look at this. There's a difference between the justice system of God and the righteousness system of God. The justice system declares the, judge, the justice of God. Today, we no longer need you. But look at this. If you were in the council of God when God spoke by his justice, you would go up from there and say, God has rejected Saul. Right? But in the righteousness council of God, how do we remove Saul? If we remove him, the man after my heart is not yet born. That is David. And it would take God 38 more years. So you may be saying, God has rejected him. But by the righteousness of God, there's a right way of doing things. So a prophet can say, don't say the Lord, I have rejected this man. And that prophet says, God says he will still stay there. We are not conflicting. We are in just two different councils. So proper interpretation to understand the times is important. I won't say much. I want us to pray. I respect time. I told you in five minutes we'll pray. What's the prayer we're going to pray? Father, raise the takeover church. Raise the takeover church. Raise a church that we infiltrate all the different facets of life. In fact, Jesus said to them, Go into all the world, not going to all the earth. There's one earth, but there are many worlds. Mama said that. One earth, but many worlds. Look at this. The Bible says, The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So things are on the earth, but he also says, The world and they that dwell in it. So things are in the world, men are in worlds. By implication, men are in the world of politics, in the world of education, in the world of economy, in the world of uh, legislation. So if you want to affect them, enter their world. So he said, all power is given unto me. How many is all? Why? Because he is sending them into all the worlds. Church came. We took the spiritual power and we left the other powers. That is why we can't take over the government. You know why? Because we have not activated the mantle for governmental influence. Father, raise for us a kingdom takeover church. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Come on, you can pray. You can pray, you can pray. You can pray, you can pray. You can pray. I said you can pray. Father, raise for yourself. Raise for yourself. Pray. 
I'm sure you know why I kept it for last. So, 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 so it doesn't spoil our meeting. Because if I allow this on the first day, it will spoil our meeting. So I have to keep it for the last. So it doesn't spoil our meeting. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Huh? We will keep struggling until we get it right. And the problem is this. That most of those that are leading us don't know this. That's the truth. And because they don't know that. And because also there are some things you can't explain to some people. That's why it's going on. I lift my hand over you. May you be one for that takeover. I can't hear you are amen. 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 The kingdoms we submit. Amen. amen. You know why you look at unbelievers, they say, with all the prayers we pray. Can you lift your hand from today? May God channel you into the place of influence. Amen. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. For the revelation of your truth. Receive the glory. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.